Black Dahlia, Prologue. 1947. The United States. Los Angeles, California. The country was still celebrating the Allied victory over the Axis forces. America, still the only nation with the bomb, was the undisputed superpower in the world. But things were only superficially perfect. There was a Cold War looming on the horizon like a gathering storm, ready to turn hot at any moment, and the Reds would soon have their own bomb. With the full force of wartime industrialization no longer necessary, jobs were scarce. Rosie the Riveter was expected to go back to the kitchen, leaving the GIs discharged from the shrinking peacetime military to try to settle down and get an available job. But that plan didn't satisfy some. After seeing the larger world, some ex-GIs didn't want to settle down in their small dead-end hometowns. Some couldn't settle down at all. With the horrors of war haunting their every waking moment, and even their dreams becoming nightmarish memories, they had nowhere to turn for mental help. PTSD was still viewed as shell shock and would most likely have been self-treated with a bottle. But the women, too, were restless. After proving themselves capable of the same labor that had been deemed men's work for so many generations, many women weren't satisfied with just being housewives. Many of the wives were now widows, and many fiancés found that death had cancelled their weddings. The stress from such a loss combined with growing financial hardship would drive some to desperation. And so, one such desperate woman would find herself in the same shoes of so many other desperate women. Only her shoes would tread the streets of the Los Angeles area in search of new love that could never replace the love that was lost. And in time, memories of that lost love would turn more into a delusional fantasy of what might have been. For a woman walking a fine line between fantasy and reality, Hollywood, a place built on fantasy, was one of the worst possible places for her to be. The City of Angels wasn't very angelic to a young woman broke of both money and spirit. Friendless, and with family hundreds or thousands of miles away, she would seek both solace and succor with dozens, perhaps hundreds, of men, men who would want what she was not prepared to give. But without a job or money, she would tell lies for her supper, but the lies told to others may have been the broken dreams of loves lost and other loves not willing to fill the void of her empty soul. And so this lonely soul would seek a better life in the city of angels, but the city of angels, a place of corruption, greed, and lust, would become hell for this young woman who would become embroiled in the plots and schemes of numerous nefarious characters. Characters who wanted to use and abuse the girl for their own perversions, perversions that she would always deny them. Perhaps it was this denial that would cause a perverted fiend to cross the line to murder. In life, this victim was named Elizabeth Short. In death and in legend, she became known as the Black Dahlia. Over the coming weeks, we will examine the life and murder of Elizabeth Short. We will investigate suspects and theories, both past and present. We will look at the case from multiple perspectives and possibilities. From what is known, we will attempt to unlock the unknown. From what is theorized, we will attempt to find fact. A murderer or murderers have remained free, and even with passing time and the possibility and probability of the perpetrator's death, the quest for justice must not be ignored, for someone knows or knew who killed Elizabeth Short, and even in death there is no statute of limitations on murder.